these days we are all just trying to save more than we spend in our in our main yeah, jobs. Yeah. You know, they're just not covering all the yeah. bills. We're all struggling out there, guys. The yep. landscape is tough. Now, the idea of starting a side hustle or uh, turning a hobby into a passion uh, of years into business, whether intentional or not, is uh -huh. certainly, I think, a good idea. Now, Kutle this morning meets visual artist Junior Elephant from Kimberley to find out how his passion exhibited in London. Beautiful. Ooh. We are now chatting to Kimberly-born artist. He's a photographer, a visual artist, graphic designer, a tattoo artist. He does it all. His name is Eugene Junior Oliphant. His work was recognized this year when the It's Liquid group chose one of his art pieces to be exhibited at the 8th edition of the London Contemporary Art Fair. He had the opportunity to travel London thanks to sponsors and he's here to talk about how this opportunity has given him the exposure to help grow and elevate in his career. Junior, thank you so much for having us in your home and, you know, to share more about your story and your art. Thank you so much for having me and giving me this opportunity to get some more exposure. Amazing. Now tell us about how did your love for art begin and who encouraged this talent? Um, as a child, uh, my uncle, his name is Crystal Stevens. Um, he was always behind closed doors in his room and I always wanted to go inside as a child, you know, but he never allowed me to and the fact that he never allowed me to made me even more curious to see what's going on behind these closed doors and then one day I found myself, you know, having the opportunity to open the door because he wasn't there and go inside and go see what it was. And as soon as I opened that door, it was like opening the door to a new world. And I saw all these paintings, all these drawings, and I was inspired immediately. And um, ever since then, when it came to school projects and so on, I was trying to be creative, always trying to be artistic in some sort of way. And then I was exposed to an arts competition called the New Breed Art. And um, that was my first professional exposure that I got. And you know, after that night, I saw that you know, this is something that I really want to take on professionally and then ever since 2018 I've been taking it seriously. It sounds like you're exposed to different disciplines of art through school and some of your work experience, but what would you say is your favorite way of expressing yourself? I like portraits first of all because I just love capturing the face, people's eyes because I feel every, every person's eyes tells a different story. And with that, um, I don't really um, focus on painting with color or drawing with color or whatever because I simply do not really have the patience for that. And um, that's why I prefer to focus on the discipline of um, fine arts within graphite and charcoal. And then I try my best to always go to a fact of hyperrealism. One of your pieces has been chosen to be exhibited at the London Contemporary Art Fair. Tell us more about the self-portrait, The Great Depression. What experience inspired that portrait? Um, what happened was, um, first of all, um, I identify as colored and living in a colored community and being raised colored and all that is especially hard to see the age of 21. And the reason for that is because uh, unemployment is the root of all evil. And through my art, I'm trying to tell that story about how difficult it is for a colored male to make it to the age of 21. So the Great Depression is about 10 to 13 um, self-portraits of myself doing different poses, whereby I had to make difficult decisions in my life that could have changed the outcome of where I would have been sitting today. Your work is still up in London. Yes. And how poetic it is that your work right now lives in London and you're able to travel the world through the things that you do. Talk to us about how that trip was. How was it being overseas? Um, being overseas was an opportunity of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, there is no words really to explain it. Um, but I can remember the first feeling that I felt when I left the subway to go to the high streets um, was that the vibe was so artistic because there's graffiti and mural everywhere, there's art everywhere. and. The, the city, the environment is so appreciative of it. It felt like the, the artistic environment in Shoreditch, London itself, appreciated my presence more than what I appreciated being there at the end of the day. Now, where can we find you? Where can we find your work? On Instagram, it is Junior Oliphant Art, and on Facebook, it's Junior Oliphant. Where to from here? Um, right now, I am working on a series called Children of the Sun. Um, and it is about mo promoting colored awareness, like what we have achieved and things like that, and but also touching on the Khoisan roots that we come from. And I want to host an exhibition 
whereby I will be hosting my art. Then I also want to host a theater play that will explain the series, what it's about and things like that. You know, tell like small five to 10 minute short story. Long term goals are, you know, to own my own gallery and to give back to the community, give back to the artists that is struggling with the same things that I'm struggling with, you know, and just make it easier for them to infiltrate the artistic industry. I absolutely love how you are growing and excelling in your career. You're also lifting others up to do the same. Thank you for joining us and sharing your story. I'm pretty sure we have all been inspired by it. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Eugene Jr. Oliphant, this young artist has passion, talent, and dedication. I'm pretty sure that all of us can write down a few notes from his story and his journey.